In this video, I will be reviewing the 2022 Kona Rope. It's currently being sold for $18.99, but give it a few weeks and it'll probably be worth more because that's just the post-pandemic bike industry. Nonetheless, this bike comes with Tetro mechanical disc brakes, a 2x9 drivetrain with Shimano Sora derailleurs, and tubeless ready WTB ST rims. But if you did want to see more specs, there will be a link in the description. Now, when you're talking about Kona Roves, you should know there are really four different levels to it. There is the Rove AL with two different wheel sizes. There's the Rove, the Rove DL, and the Rove LTD. The one we'll be talking about today is just the Rove, which just so happens to be, in my mind, the best bang for your buck because it is the lowest price that you can get your hands on a chromoly steel frame. Some of you are probably wondering, why would you want a steel frame? Because yes, they are going to be a bit heavier as this one's right around 27 pounds. On top of this, full suspension mountain bikes are rarely ever chromoly steel. They're almost always either carbon fiber or aluminum. So what makes a gravel bike any different? Well, to demonstrate why it's such a big upgrade for gravel bikes, I thought I'd go out for a ride and give you a direct comparison. So here's what the experience of riding a chromoly gravel bike is like. And here's the experience of riding an aluminum bike on the exact same terrain. If you hadn't noticed, it's a bit more of a bumpy ride. Now, while I may be exaggerating just a tad bit, this is almost what it actually feels like when you go back to back from an aluminum and a chromoly steel gravel bike, because it is amazing how much of the shocks and vibrations and little bumps that that frame absorbs and you don't even notice. I mean, just riding down the sidewalk alone, you're going to have a much better experience if you're on a steel bike, because those tiny little bumps, you're not gonna feel near as much. And as mentioned earlier, full suspension mountain bikes don't need chromoly steel because they have suspension with a front fork and a rear shock that's going to do all the absorbing for you but on a gravel bike that is rigid you're going to need something to absorb all those little bumps or you're going to feel every single thing you ride over and i'll tell you right now that is not a fun time so for that reason alone i highly recommend buying the kona rove instead of the kona rove aluminum but either way the next thing we'll talk about is shifting now if you haven't rode a drop bar bike in quite a while this is going to seem very odd because the shifting and braking are all combined which is extremely nice because you're able to bend down and keep in the same riding position and shift and pull the brakes simultaneously. Which isn't to say the only way you can brake or shift is when your hands are in that drop position because these brake levers and bars are designed well enough that virtually anywhere on the bars except maybe up on the top you're going to be able to shift and brake. So whether you're on a leisurely ride with your hands up on the hoods because it's pretty comfortable or down in the drop position you don't have to worry about quickly adjusting your hands. The next thing to mention is that if you were planning on using the Rove as a bike packing bike, which it would be great for, it's even better because of these mounts. There's a ton of them on the bike, so if you want to put bags or bottle cages, anything, you don't have to worry, there's a ton. And the next thing we'll talk about briefly is the size of the tires. As opposed to the standard 700C wheels that you're going to see on most gravel bikes, this bike has 650B wheels, which first off just means a smaller diameter, but it does have some advantages such as being able to run a wider tire as well as run a lower tire pressure. So while it may not be as good as 700C for speed and efficiency, it's going to offer better traction on roots and rocks on the mountain bike trails. That is if you're actually using this bike for single track, which leads us to our next topic. Who is this bike actually for? I'd say that this bike really exemplifies the appeal of gravel bikes, which is really just your everything renaissance bike. I mean, whatever you can throw at this bike, it's going to be able to handle. So whether you're doing single track, cruising on the road, it's all going to be fun and comfortable. So if you're looking for a bike that's just going to get you through absolutely everything and is kind of a one bike purchase, as well as not wanting to break the bank and get the highest end components there are, this is definitely the bike for you. And the last thing we'll talk about in this video are the few things I didn't like about this bike. The first being the front derailleur. Unlike what is standard for two gears in the front, there are four modes instead of the two, which the idea behind that I think is that it doesn't rub and you can kind of adjust it yourself more, which to me is just frustrating because it's an unneeded level of complication. And in my mind, it's just so much nicer to run a one by, which you'll get in the step up version of the Rove. The only other thing I will mention is the stock tires, which are the Maxxis receptors. Uh, they are kind of thin and I I wouldn't say that normally because you do want thin tires that don't have that much tread but within 30 seconds of riding this bike in the city I ran over a little bit of glass and immediately popped my tube and it ended up putting a pretty nasty gash on the tire. The only reason I'm mentioning this is obviously you don't want to be riding over glass, but I guarantee if I rode over on a mountain bike or just something with a bit more tread, it would have more protection and probably not pop the tube. So after a trip to the bike shop, my dad decided not only to get tubes, but more aggressive tires with more tread and just something I thought I should mention. 
but that's really all there is to say. It's overall a great bike. You get the fantastic chromoly steel frame, which is just so worth it and makes such a difference, and some pretty decent components. So overall, a worthwhile purchase. But that is the end of the video. Thank you guys for liking and subscribing, and I will see you guys in the next video.